Over the weekend, neocon Nikki Haley was humiliated again by Donald Trump, this time in her own home state in the South Carolina Republican primary. Here's an overly dramatic NBC weekend anchor breaking the news to the American people. Trump delivering a crushing blow to Haley in her home state on Saturday, trouncing her by nearly 20 points with nearly 60% of the vote. The former president dominating nearly every key group in the South Carolina Republican primary electorate, according to NBC News exit poll results. Trump now setting his sights squarely on the general election. But instead of finally dropping out, it was bizarro world over at the Nikki Haley camp where her delusional fans greeted the Democrat operative in what sounded like a victory speech. I don't believe Donald Trump can beat Joe Biden. There are huge numbers of voters in our Republican primaries who are saying they want an alternative. Actually, the overwhelming majority of her voters are Democrats, and this is something that even CNN and MSNBC openly admit, and something that the voters themselves admit Here's one from the New Hampshire primary. Nikki Haley. And why did you vote for Nikki Haley? Uh, it's a vote against Trump. Uh, I think it would be better to have her against Biden in the uh, elections than it would be Trump and her. Do you consider yourself generally independent, Republican, or Democrat? Uh, Democrat. <laughs> so when you undeclared you voted for Nikki Haley, if it was Nikki Haley against Joe Biden in a general election, who are you voting for? Joe Biden. <laughs> These kinds of people are Nikki Haley's base. They are the overwhelming majority of her voters. I said earlier this week that no matter what happens in South Carolina, I would continue to run for president. <laughs> Listen to those morons. I'm a woman of my word. No, ma'am, you are a liar and a Democrat operative, and that is so obvious at this point that even Gavin Newsom admits it. I wonder, Governor, when you look at the landscape, do you think that it is time for Nikki Haley to drop out of the race, and, and do Democrats want the general election what? to begin in earnest? Well, I, I don't know why Democrats would want her out of the race. She's one of our better surrogates. I mean, she's <laughs> defining the opposition to Trump incredibly effectively. I mean, she's making points. I'm applauding every single day about his temperament, his capacity, uh, his, you know, unraveling in real time. Uh, and so I think it's I think she's been incredibly effective. So I hope she stays in personally. Uh, but look, at the end of the day, at this point, everybody knows that she's not running in hopes of being the Republican nominee. She has a zero percent chance of actually doing that. She probably has a zero percent chance of even winning a single state in any of the primaries particularly Super Tuesday, next Tuesday, March 5th. So now the political pundits in the Democrat Party are starting to come to grips with the fact that it's going to be a rematch. Or, well, it might be a rematch between Joe Biden and Donald Trump. That is, if old Joe can make it to the finish line. And so, as always, the Democrats are accusing Republicans of the very thing that they and their party is guilty of. And so now the new talking point is that it's Donald Trump who has dementia and Donald Trump who has diminishing mental capacity. There's a there's a a, a, a it's not even stylistic. There's a there's a general incoherence um, uncle uncle ramble standards mm -hmm. um, thing going on with him that doesn't get a lot of attention because the mainstream press, particularly the print press, has much more enjoyed talking about Joe Biden uh, and the signs of his age. But Trump is rambling and incoherent even when he is at his best and even when it's early in the evening. And tonight, even just getting that slice of it is a real reminder of that. It's Trump, they say, who appears to be showing gross signs of dementia. Experts say, according to new evidence, what evidence you may be wondering? Well, MSNBC's Lawrence Stop the Hammering O'Donnell has uncovered what he believes is the smoking gun. Donald Trump talking about low flow showerheads that are designed to save water, but the water pressure on them is terrible. In Donald Trump's declining mind, he probably thought he was saying something, but the words that came out were idiotic. And that happens all the time. They come out with uh, faucets where no water comes out. You know, if you go and buy a home, and they know what I mean, the showers, you stand under a shower and said that. And think about what Donald Trump just said. Donald Trump thinks 
that if a shower produces no water, you actually have to stand there five times longer. Think about that. Think about how that mind works. How long would you stay in your shower if no water was coming out? Wouldn't you get out of there a lot faster if no water is coming out? If someone told you that no water was coming out of their shower, would you then assume that they stay in the shower five times longer? That's how Donald Trump's mind works in cognitive decline. Donald Trump said, and apparently believes, because of his cognitive decline, quote, they come out with faucets where no water comes out. We will get Mary Trump's assessment of Donald Trump's cognitive decline in a moment. I still can't decide if Lawrence O'Donnell is so dense that he doesn't understand that Donald Trump was talking about the low flow shower heads and how the water pressure is so low that people have to stand under them for two or three times as long in order to wash the shampoo out of their hair or wash the soap off of their body, or if he is just trying to gaslight his audience who may be that dumb to not understand that Donald Trump was clearly talking about the low flow shower heads. Of course, Joy Reid, the angry black woman on MSNBC with the culturally appropriating blonde hair is upset and blaming white Christians for Donald Trump winning in South Carolina. About the makeup of this electorate. I mean, this is a, what, 92% white, overwhelmingly evangelical Christian primary electorate in South Carolina. And I think writ large around the country, that is the way they think. I mean, even among the independent voters who are about, what, 21% of this electorate, it's like almost a 50-50 question as to whether President Biden is a le the legitimate president of the United States. That is what the Republican Party is now. Well, if that's what the Republican Party is these days, then I'm glad because it was, and still is to a large extent, in need of dramatic improvement. I mean, let's be honest, most Republicans and even Christians have gotten extremely weak and cowardly over the last 10 years. So it's great to see a revival. Someone else who's running for office this year is Brian Stelter, who is running for school board in New Jersey as a Republican. So it must be a conservative area, a normal area in New Jersey. And so in hopes of trying to dupe the locals into voting for him, he's running as a Republican. Could this person get any creepier? Brian Stelter running for school board. Who had that on their 2024 bingo card? I wouldn't even trust him to be a school crossing guard, let alone on the school board. Something else you might find creepy and disturbing is the content in my new book, The War on Conservatives, because... When you really understand what it is that the Marxist Democrats are doing and just how far along their agenda is, it absolutely will freak you out. But people need to know. So order the book in paperback from Amazon.com or download the ebook for any of the major ebook stores. And of course, there's a link to the Amazon listing in the description below. So click it and head on over there and check it out.